Hey guys, Outdoor Enthusiast 88 here again. So today I'm out here testing this AT3 Tactical RD50 Red Dot sight. I have it here on my Ruger 1022, and so far it's handled really well. Uh, it has 11 brightness settings. Right now it's on 8, which is about what I've been keeping it on. Uh, it also has a 2 MOA dot, as well as a 50,000 hour battery life. Now that compares to the Primae Arms Red Dot sight that I have reviewed in the past, and I have it on my AR, but at almost half the price. Uh, this is going right now for about 75 bucks on Amazon. Uh, it is a clone of the Bushnell TRS-25, but I have tested the TRS-25 in the past and I didn't really like it that much. Uh, that one actually has a 3 MOA dot as well as only a 4,000 or 3,000 hour battery life, I believe. And it is 60 bucks, but for $15 more, you can get this. And I think the technology has really improved on the red dot sites nowadays and you really don't need something super expensive, especially on a Ruger 1022. So I've been testing this out, took uh, maybe a dozen or so rounds to actually get sighted in. I went ahead and sighted on that steel target out there, that silhouette. Uh, like I said, it took about a dozen rounds or so, but I got it right where I wanted at about 25 yards. And uh, the bugs are out, which is always good, but luckily fall is coming. So hopefully it cools down here in North Carolina a little bit. But really, I think, you know, beyond the fact that it was almost sighted in the factory, it was probably a few inches to the left at 25 yards, uh, maybe like two inches down. So it was close. It would hit steel at that, but I wanted to make it exact. And what you do is you actually take these caps off, and it had little adjustments here, and I took my little Leatherman, and I just made the adjustments to it, and now it got right on target. So, like I said, I talked about some of the specs here. I think it compares to the TRS-25 from the Bushnell, but it is a step above. It's almost in between the primary arms and the Bushnell, kind of level right there. Uh, Sig Sauer, they make some that are in that level too, um, near the primary arms level, and also they make a budget option as well. Uh, this actually held up really great so far, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and test it on a uh, shotgun later on just kind of see a lot of people who uh, see my other red dot sight reviews always said throw it on a shotgun so we will see how it holds up and then try to put it back on here and see if it's close to zero I mean it might wiggle off a little bit just because you're taking it off putting it back on um, I did actually kind of pre-sight it in which is good because in um, on this rail here is actually a UTG see-through rail for the 1022 and you can only see about half the sight with this rail but the good news is that it's a good option and it really holds tight and it ha you can put some Loctite on there, four screws, uh, it really holds in there nice and tight and this actually of course stays nice and tight on there um, just in the last few mags that I've done through here. And you can only see about like I said about half the iron sight but the good news is you can see it a little bit so I kind of pre-sighted it in a little bit just kind of get it close. Um, I didn't really have to do too much adjustment even looking through I saw that it was really close already. Um, the red dot sight itself like I said, at level 8 for the brightness setting, um, you know, in, indoors it has kind of like some flary stars around it a little bit, and it could be my eyes too, but uh, indoors it's kind of flary, but I tell you, outside here, that is a really nice, small, crisp dot. No flares at all. Uh, towards the top left, because the emitter, emitter is on the bottom right, towards the top left you get a little bit of glare. Uh, you're not going to be able to really see that through the camera. But when you're looking straight down the site, no problems. And I've actually been using this uh, target grade performance 22 long rifle here by Federal, uh, just to kind of sight it in and goof off today. Uh, when I ended up playing some of the steel targets, some little clay pigeons there. Um, and so far, so good. So let's go ahead and I'll show you guys what it looks like when uh, it was right in the box. So let's take a closer look at what comes in the box when this is brand new before you actually install it. Here it is, AT3 Tactical RD50 Red Dot. You got two MOA Red Dot Reticle, 11 brightness settings, up to 50,000 hour battery life, waterproof and fog proof. Uh, it's a pretty simple box. You kind of just slide off the top right here. There you go. And inside you have some mounting instructions, installing the battery instructions. So we got uh, some kind of customer service notes here. There you go, some just basic instructions there. And you got some uh, padding, as well as a baggie. And this baggie contains your red dot sight. It's nice and wrapped up in there. Little silica gel. Here she is. See that little cover on there? You got your twist knob. Really tight. Battery compartment. No battery in there right now. 
side adjustment. Looks like you need a, uh, a end of a case or maybe like a coin. You, sometimes the caps have little things on them, but this one does not. Hex screw to adjust putting this on a rail or on a riser. There's the battery and its own little packaging. There's your hex. And here's a little wipe cloth, keep the lens clean. All right, so let's go and get this on the rifle. Take a look at how she does. So installing this red dot sight is actually pretty straightforward. All right, you have a low profile mount right here. You can also go and get a medium and a high riser depending on what kind of application you want and what kind of rifle you're using. Now with this, I just want to put it on a Ruger 1022 with a actual special rail that has a deep cut down the middle where you can actually use backup iron sights if you need to. It's not great, but you can actually see the sights with an a actual red dot on top. So that's pretty neat feature there. I'll put the rail link down below. It's actually really cheap, but it actually works really well and there's no problem I've had with these in the past. So with the rail being a Picatinny like this, you're gonna actually have to loosen up the screw here and I'll show you guys what you need to do. Because the rail system is, um, you can't just slide it on like maybe like a weaver style. This actually has to be loosened right here. And I'll show you, you actually have to loosen it. And the screw is actually on the right side near the knob here for the brightness settings. You wanna loosen it enough where it almost has this cover fall off. Now you can't, it's not a problem if this does come off. If it comes off, there's two springs and the hole for the screw right there, no big deal. You can see the springs right there. Those won't fly out. They're actually attached to the inside of the red dot. But you wanna loosen it just enough where it'll slide onto that rail. All right, not too much, not too little. Just enough where you can slide. Now choose where you wanna put it. You can place it anywhere you'd like. Uh, typically the further away the better. However, if you wanna have a little bit closer to see the dot better, you can. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna do it like right in the middle somewhere, right about here. And now you just go ahead and take your key. And just crank it down. The key and the screw that come with this actually seem to be pretty good. It doesn't seem to strip very easily, which is good. A lot of times these cheaper scopes uh, actually, or cheaper red dots actually go and strip out the screws pretty easily, which is not good for anybody. But this one seems to work really well. All right, and there you have it. Fully installed, ready to go. All right guys, so as promised, I slapped that red dot on the side of a shotgun. This is a 12 gauge. Mossberg 500. I have a uh, variety of uh, mixed matched bird shot here. Just a found in a bucket that I had. So I'm just gonna go ahead, take some shots with some bird shot. Take about uh, yeah, four or five shots at some cans out there. Let's see, five cans, five shots. What do you think? It is on. You're not gonna be able to tell that. Oh, obviously, I can't use it when it's on the shotgun, but. Let's go ahead, see how she holds up. All right, let's take it off and uh, put it back on the Ruger 1022 and see if it's still on. Well, it's definitely on, see if it's still sighted in. Made a little mark on the uh, 1022 here, just to kind of know exactly what slot I had on here. It's not a numbered rail, so. Uh, the screw actually seems to be holding up pretty well. Uh, just It's a little hex, so it's not a quick detach. You can put this on a mount and then get the quick detach, but it seems to be a pretty good quality screw itself, which could always be a concern with these budget type red dots and budget materials. But it seems with the wrench here to get on there just fine, no stripping or anything like that. All right, so I put some fresh paint on the target down there. Let's kind of aim for the center and uh, see if it's still pretty, pretty on or at least close. Looks pretty good. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, look at that. All 10 rounds right there, center mass, no change. 
So I haven't really tested out the waterproof to this at all. Uh, I have no doubt that it is waterproof. Uh, obviously it's shock resistant with the shotgun going off. Uh, you could probably drop this, throw it around and have no problems with it whatsoever. A lot of these sites, including regular scopes, are waterproof just because of the way they're designed with gases and sealed up inside there. So I really don't think you have a problem with that. All right, guys. So wrapping this up, I think this little red dot site has proved its worth. Uh, I have about 300 rounds through it so far. It survived a few rounds there on the shotgun. Uh, obviously, it survived a bunch of rounds on the 22 here. And I think, you know, I might leave it on the proper setting here, either eight or nine. Uh, 50,000 hour battery life is a long time just to leave it on, but it's not really a home defense uh, rifle, so you could probably just kind of crank it off. And speaking of the crank, it is a very positive crank. Uh, the only thing I would say is because it is a crank, like the Bushnell TRS, it's not going to be as nice as this Primary Arms MD ADS right here with these push buttons. Uh, this has held up really well as well. You can see I kind of beat it up a little bit in the last few years or so of testing it, last couple of years at least. And uh, I do leave this one on most of the time. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. Seems to work really well. Uh, it's a simple on-off kind of mechanism here. You can turn it on by hitting one of the buttons, turn it off by hitting both at the same time. Uh, same exact caps, uh, the same, I believe the same battery as well. And then also it has um, a little bit different design. This one actually seems, if you want to compare size, you can see this one seems a little bigger, maybe a little beefier, which is probably where the price comes in there too, especially with the touch technology here on the buttons versus just a regular knob that could kind of have problems, especially if any dirt or grit get in there, this knob might kind of start, start not working very well. So this is great for like a 22, uh, something that you're not going to really need, you know, running through sand or something like that. Uh, whereas the primary arms like MDS, something a little more, a little more money, uh, that actually still is a good contender for uh, like home defense or, um, and if you use it every single day on something like an AR. Uh, this is rated, this uh, this one right here, the RD50, is rated for uh, shotgun, rifle, all that. So if you want to put it on anything you want, go ahead. I think it's a great option. Uh, it comes with this little lens cover here, uh, which is almost the same exact lens cover, in fact, that this one came with. So you can see it fits it just fine. So it's just a cheap little lens cover or something if you want to keep it stored away, nice and safe. You know, the lens is there, you don't want to get scratched up or something in your gun case or something like that. But yeah, I think it's worked really well and I uh, definitely recommend it. So, all right guys, well, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, hey, follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of pictures before I put the reviews up so you guys get a kind of a in-depth uh, look beforehand of what we're doing um, on the channel. But uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel and uh, have a good one.